let's stop your gradients from looking like this and instead make them a bit more interesting like this. You see, After Effects' built-in gradient tool is okay, but there's a few techniques I want to share with you that will not only improve your skill set, but also make your work look 10 times better. So let's get to it. So in After Effects, I'm going to go ahead and create a new composition. And this is going to be 1920 by 1080, and we'll just set it to 10 seconds. Obviously, you can vary duration here or size and do it completely to what you want. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new circle, as this is going to be my base object. Now, you can use any object here. I just think a circle works really nice. So I'm going to go up and press the circle tool up here, and I'm going to hold Control and Shift while I click in the center of my screen, and this will create a nice even circle. And then I'm going to press Control, Alt, and Home to send it to my anchor point, then Control, Home to send to my circle. Now, you'll see I've actually been doing a bit of gradient testing here, but we don't want this, and we don't want a stroke on it either. So I'm just going to set my stroke width to zero, and on my fill, I'm just going to click the fill button and change it to solid color. Now, you can make this any color you want. I'm going to stick with this kind of purpley pink color. I think that works quite nice, and I know I can add some nice highlights to this. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and create a new composition. So I'm going to press Control and N, and we're just going to call this Rectangles. And then we're going to change the width and height to 1920 by 1920. So we get a nice square comp. I'm just going to go ahead and select my Rectangle tool up here. And draw in some rectangles into my scene. Now I want these all different sizes. And they can be on the same shape layer or different shape layers. However you prefer to work. I'm just going to do them on different shape layers. And I'm going to change the fill of each one as I kind of go through. Now, I'd also recommend just making these slightly varied in sizes so we get a bit of variation in this as well. And you'll see why in just a moment. So I'm going to add some different colors into this that I think will complement uh, my original pink. And I'm just going to go ahead and keep drawing a few more rectangles on these shape layers. Okay, so once you have your rectangles uh, built out, similar to what I did, you'll notice they're all different colors, all different sizes. I'm not gonna name them just for ease, but feel free to name them if you want to. I don't think it's very important. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and duplicate all of these by selecting them all and pressing Control D on my keyboard. And I'm gonna bring these to the top while they're all highlighted, just clicking and dragging one of them. And then I'm just gonna slide them over so my end goes to where my start is. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a null with either layer, new, and null object, or you can do Control, Alt, Shift, and Y, which is a shortcut. And I'm just gonna parent all of these by selecting them all and dragging the pick whip to my null. And I'll just call this Control. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a positional keyframe by pressing the stopwatch here and pressing P on my keyboard to bring up position. And I'm gonna go across to two seconds. And in here, I'm just gonna type minus 1920. We want to go the opposite direction, so we plus 1920. I always get them mixed up. And something's not aligned here, but it's not a major issue. If you want it to loop, you can play with this. I think my alignment's out. And my maths, perhaps I would need to go here instead. That gives us a looping color set, which is kind of what I want. I'll leave the direction for now, but obviously you can play with the direction and change that as much as you want to. I'm just going to quickly size that rectangle up to close that gap as well. Now we have this animated, we want to go back to our main comp and bring this rectangle comp uh, into our ball. And I'm just going to change my track mat here to set to the ball. And now we just kind of have this going on, which definitely isn't what we want. So I'm going to go ahead and add a Gaussian blur here. Now this, what's just popped up is Video Copilot's FX console. It just makes searching for plugins much easier. It's a free plugin, or you can go up to your effects window, effects tab up here, or your effects window here, and again, type in Gaussian blur. Then I'm just going to go ahead and add this to my pre-comp. I'm going to change the blurriness to 350 so it gets really, really soft. And now if we hit play, you'll see we get this kind of blending uh, colors that we kind of have, and it gives a nice gradient effect. Now we can rotate this just by pressing R on our keyboard to bring up a rotation and just rotate that slightly so we get a slightly diagonal instead. And then to this rectangle, I'm going to go ahead and add the bulge effect as well. Now, all this is going to do is make it look a bit more rounded and a bit more circular. So I'm just going to increase my uh, horizontal and vertical radius to kind of fit the ball a bit. And then we can increase the bulge height a bit as well. Just to give us a slightly different look. Maybe I'll set that to four. And we can also change the taper radius too. And obviously, feel free to play around with these settings and it will give you a different look. 
But now we get more of a rounded kind of gradient going on. Rather than it was flat before, you can see uh, it begins to round it. And obviously adding that bulge gives us just a bit of circularness. So it actually looks like a ball rather than just a flat object. Now we're going to go ahead and create another comp to go along with our rectangles. So Control and N. Again, I'll leave this square and I'll just call this circles. This time, as you've probably guessed, I'm going to go ahead and use my ellipse and create a circle just randomly in my comp. And feel free to change the color as well. Maybe I'll get some oranges or yellows in here and see how that looks. Obviously, you can play with the colors right up till the end. It doesn't really matter. Now, to this layer, I'm going to go ahead and on my add here, you can see that on your layer panel or up at the top there, you can go ahead and add a repeater to this. And I'm just going to change the number of copies to maybe about nine. And on my transform, I just want to add some rotation to this and uh, we'll get some random rotation going on and we can get some random scale in there as well. And uh, maybe because it's all centering around this anchor point, I'll just move it over. But we want to go ahead and animate this to make it look miles better. So I'm going to go to my anchor point in my repeater settings. I'm going to all click the stopwatch and type in wiggle and open parentheses. I'm going to do 0.2 comma 50. And that will just add some really subtle uh, movement to these to these circles. Now, as you can tell, I'm kind of in need of a new PC with how long it takes to run preview a few circles, but these are just floating around. And you can change the speed of this just by increasing this 0.2 number if you want to, or change how much it's moving by increasing the second number. So the second number will just change how much it moves, and the first number will change the speed of which it moves. So if you want something a bit faster, you can increase that as well. I'm going to leave it to 0.2 and maybe I'll actually up it to maybe 200 instead to get a bit more variation in there and you can see them all moving around. So I'm going to go back to my main comp again and in my project tab I now have the circles. I'm going to drag this into my uh, tab here. I'm just going to scale this down a tad so it kind of fits more into the circle by pressing S on my keyboard to bring up the scale parameters and I'm going to map that to the ball as well under the track map tab going to go back to my rectangles and under my effect controls I'm just going to copy both of these by selecting them both pressing ctrl c and then pasting that into my circles and now we get some more interesting things going on actually on reflection I don't really like the uh, yellow we've got going on so I'm just going to change this to maybe a purple color to get a bit more interest in there and kind of like light speed simulated around our ball now we're going to uh, create another light source in this, and this is going to be essentially like our rim light in photography. So I'm going to dupe the ball, and we're going to add that on. And at the top here, I need to turn this layer back on. I'm just going to go to our circle ellipse tool here, and we need to create some masks. So I'm going to go to my tool creates mask instead of creating a new shape layer. And this is important to do when using shape layers. And I'm just going to create a new circle in my comp here. And I kind of want that a bit bigger than my circle. I'm going to press V on my keyboard to switch to my move cursor. I'm going to just double select this mask. And I kind of want to create like a little highlight so we get that moon shape. I'm going to set my mask to subtract instead so it takes away from. So now we have this kind of look and it gives us that kind of half moon crescent like a highlight is hitting it. I'm going to go ahead and change this uh, fill color to white. And then again, I'm going to add another Gaussian blur. And we're just going to blur that out once more. So maybe I'll bring that up to about 50. See how that looks. And you'll notice it's been cut off by our shape layer. But we're going to mat it to our ball once more anyway. And then I'm going to unsolo that. And you can see the kind of look we've got going on. Again, feel free to play around with the colors. But you'll notice everything is animating and that light's not moving. So it looks quite strange. So what we're going to do is bring up the rotation properties by pressing R on our keyboard with that layer selected. I'm going to alt click the rotation parameter and we're just going to type in time times 36. So asterisk is a times there. Now if we hit play we have this kind of cool moving ball look and you get this little light rotating around as well. Now you might think that's a little slow compared to how everything else is moving. Uh, so what I'm going to do is maybe increase that to 60. And all you need to do is just change the uh, times there and just change the value in that. Now you'll notice we're having things move across and then they're stopping. And that's because we didn't time remap our original rectangles. So what we need to do is go to where we keyframed it, which I believe was about two seconds. And I'm just going to trim this comp by pressing N on my keyboard. I'm going to press Control, Shift and X to trim that to only two seconds. 
I'm going to go back to my main comp by pressing tab on my keyboard, bringing up my flowchart. And now with this rectangle uh, selected, I'm going to hit Control, Alt, and T. And that will bring up my time remap. Now, the weird thing is with time remap is it glitches on our end point. So I need to go back one frame and create a new keyframe and delete the end one. Now on this time remap, I'm going to alt click the stopwatch and type in loop out. And you'll see it come up and it's capital O and you can just have empty parentheses. But now this will just continue to play and it will loop through. And we have a more fluid motion going on. And of course, them circles are maybe too pink, so you can't actually see them. Not a lover of the yellow, but we can always go in and change all the rectangles and circles and all that kind of stuff. So now I'm going to select all of these layers and pre-compose those by pressing Control, Shift, and C. And I'm just going to call this Ball. I'm going to hit Enter. And we need to maybe jazz this up a little because it's still looking a bit plain. I'm going to right-click my Ball layer, go to Layer Styles, and add an Inner Glow. I'm just going to bring down this tab here and change the color to something a bit more interesting. Let's get kind of like a deep orangey red in there, perhaps. And we can size this up to really see what's going on. And you can see it coming in on the edges there. You just change my resolution. You can see it hitting these edges. You could always change the opacity or the blend mode as well, if you want to kind of change around and play with that. Not loving the pink hint there. Perhaps a purple when we mix the orange in on overlay. Or we could add some blues in and get some real gradients going. Perhaps a dark blue looks quite nice. Dark purple. And then I'm going to duplicate this layer, this ball pre-comp, by pressing Ctrl and D on my keyboard. And this one we can rename to ball bevel. I'm going to go down onto my layer styles. I'm going to turn off that inner glow. And then I'm going to right click, layer styles, and bevel and emboss. I'm going to open this up and just change these settings in here. So let's adjust our size. Let's really crank that up to see what's going on. And I'm just going to solo this layer by pressing this button here. I can kind of see what's going on. Let's really crank that. So it kind of covers the whole ball. So maximum of 250. And um, we can soften that off as well. And just bring that up to make it a little softer. And obviously, we want to change this light and dark color that's going on. So again, let's make them match our uh, scene a bit better. Maybe we'll have kind of like a light yellow or an orange. And then change the blacks to more like a purple, blue tone, something around there. Blue is looking kind of cool. Bit of light blue in there, get a rainbow going on. And then I'm going to go ahead and change my mode to overlay instead. And press T on my keyboard. And maybe just bring this down to about 90%. I'm just going to unsolo that. And now we get this real wild mix of colors going on. It's full on rainbow at the minute. Then I'm just going to dupe the ball layer one more time and bring this to the top. Set this to overlay again. And we're going to add an effect called CC Glass. I'm just going to go down to my surface and light here. And you'll notice we get this really cool kind of iridescent look almost uh, with the CC Glass on. And we can just play with these settings as much as we like. And feel free to play with the height and the light and all that kind of good stuff. Really change how it looks. So let's maybe bring that down. And then I want to go ahead and map this to my original ball layer. So we lose the outer edge. And you can see the difference we've got going on. It really affects that kind of outer edge here. And you'll notice it gives us a bit more of a defined circular look. Obviously, we can reduce this opacity as well if you're not a huge lover or you don't like CC glass. And now if you hit play, we have this really awesome iridescent ball look that I absolutely love. And you've probably seen in a lot of animations recently. Now, gradients really are just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to making your work look good. And there's a few more simple techniques that you can use to really transform the look of your work. So you can go ahead and watch this video next where I'll show you exactly what those techniques are.